A Florida Circuit Court judge has denied a motion to dismiss the civil lawsuit filed by the family of Gabby Petito against Brian Laundrie's family. The case will proceed to trial. The lawsuit alleges that Christopher and Roberta Laundrie knew the whereabouts of Gabby's body during the time in which authorities were pouring resources into a massive missing persons investigation. Gabby's parents, Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt, seek more than $30,000 in damages for the mental anguish they suffered due to the alleged deceit of the Laundries. The March filing also alleges that Christopher and Roberta helped Brian conceal Gabby's murder and were making plans for him to flee the country. The suit also alleges that instead of helping Joseph and Nicole locate their daughter, the laundry parents went on vacation with Brian and ignored pleas for help from Gabby's family, and that Roberta blocked Nicole's phone number and Facebook profile last September to avoid contact as Nicole sought answers about what happened to Gabby. Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry exhibited extreme and outrageous conduct which constitutes behavior, under the circumstances, which goes beyond all possible bounds of decency and is regarded as shocking, atrocious, and utterly intolerable in a civilized community, the filing, which was obtained by People, reads. The Laundry family sought to dismiss the case saying that they were not obligated to disclose any information they knew about their son or Gabby. Judge Hunter Carroll agreed that the Laundry family was not required to speak about the case, but said the other actions they are accused of were particularly callous and cruel. If the facts of this case were truly about silence with no affirmative action by the Laundries, the court would have resolved this case in the Laundries' favor on the concept of the lack of legal duty for the Laundries to act, Carol ruled. Had the Laundries truly stayed silent, the court would have granted the motion to dismiss in the Laundries' favor. But they did not stay silent. The judge seemed to be referring to a statement that the Laundry family issued on September 14, 2021, before Gabby's body was recovered. The statement, issued through their lawyer, said, It is our understanding that a search has been organized for Miss Petito in or near Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. On behalf of the Laundry family it is our hope that the search for Miss Petito is successful and that Miss Petito is reunited with her family. Judge Carroll stated in his decision that if the Petito family's allegations in their civil complaint are correct, and they knew Gabby was dead, the Laundry's statement was particularly callous and cruel and it is sufficiently outrageous to state claims for intentional infliction of emotional distress. For breaking crime news, ongoing trial coverage and details of intriguing unsolved cases. The Petito and Laundry families entered the national spotlight last summer when Gabby's parents reported the young woman missing after she stopped responding to messages while on a cross-country road trip with her fiancé, Brian. It was soon revealed that Brian had quietly abandoned the trip early and returned to his parents' house in Florida, without Gabby. Nobody in the Laundry family notified Gabby's parents that she was missing, or that Brian had left their daughter behind, even though the Laundries retained an attorney the day after Brian returned. The date the Laundries retained an attorney is a key detail in Joseph and Nicole's lawsuit, since it aligns with their theory that Brian's family knew about her murder from the beginning and withheld vital information. In 
September of 2021, Gabby's body was located in Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. A medical examiner determined she died by homicidal strangulation. Brian, who vanished around the same time amid nationwide calls for his arrest, was found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound in the Florida wilderness in October of last year. After a months-long criminal investigation into Gabby's disappearance and, later, murder, the I determined in January that Brian was responsible for her death, stating the eighth had written a confession in his notebook before he took his life. By Steve Helling and Christine Pelisek.